Today we're going to be showing a handful of different ways that applicants can create fake documents on their own machine, and then a handful of online sources where they can download edited or templated documents. Once we've done that, we'll run these documents through the back end of the SNAP system to show you the results. To start out with, I have a real statement, uh, and I have this open within Photoshop. What I'm going to be doing here is just a couple of simple visual edits. These types of edits are things that we've been seeing a lot more of in the past few years. Uh, certainly part of that is that tools like Photoshop have become significantly less expensive. The other thing that we've seen, though, is that things like social media have really taught the average user that it's very simple to make these kinds of visual edits. Uh, and we like to say that if you know how to make edits to a photo of yourself to upload to social media like Instagram, you can probably figure out how to move a few numbers around on the screen. As you can see here, in about 60 seconds of time, I've taken $6,000 and turned it into 61000 Now, if I were a real applicant, I would, of course, come in and make sure that all of these line items balanced out. Uh, and in fact, that's actually how some of our current customers are catching edited documents, is they come in and check the math. The next type of document that we're seeing a lot of is what are called fillable PDF documents. Uh, now, this was at one time an original Bank of the West statement. But what happens with fillable PDF documents is that the individual lines of text are selectable. And the thing that's scary about that is that all you have to do to make an edit here is just select the line that you want to edit and type in the new value. And so in this case, you can see I've switched the name on the statement. You can change line item values. And one of the more common things that we're seeing now is we're seeing people update statements from 2019 and make it look as though it's current. Next, we'll show you some of the online sources where applicants can download fake documentation. The first type of source uh, is what we call a template farm. Uh, this one is called onlinepaystub.com, and it is one of literally hundreds of sources where, as an applicant, I can come in, fill out whatever information I want, give myself a large hourly rate or salary, and these types of sites will calculate out my earnings and deductions automatically. Uh, and in the case of this one, for $6, I can print out two pay stubs uh, of different pay periods that make it look like these are real documents. Now, at this point, we often get asked by our customers, how could software like this be legal? And the answer is, tools like this are actually protected under First Amendment rights as educational software, because their claim is that they're not actually committing fraud themselves. They're simply teaching you about your finances. We certainly think that this is nonsense, but they are technically protected as educational tools. The next type of website uh, that is also very dangerous is what we call a document farm. And here what you can see is there are all of these different bank statements where, as a user, I can come in and download a fillable PDF. Uh, this was the section that I showed earlier where I came in and selected a line of text and simply changed the name. And as you can see here, there's a wide variety of sources. And what makes this particularly dangerous is that many people are familiar with these templated pay stub tools. And so they will ask for matching bank statements and pay stubs. And when they see, for example, a real looking Bank of America bank statement that shows the correct amounts of deposits, that can appear to be real financials. But as you can see here, I could very easily download any of these documents and create matching bank statements and pay stubs that were 100% fraudulent. So with that in mind, we're going to move to the back end of our system. And so I've uploaded each of the types of documents that I've shown here today. And as we run this, what you need to know is that we're showing a little bit more detail than what you would see on your average report that a leasing agent or leasing manager would see. And the reason for that is so that we can talk through some of the specifics of what our system is catching. The report that you would be getting in the production environment is very simple. It's a thumbs up or thumbs down with an explanation of the edits if a document does prove to be fake. With this first one here, what we're looking at is we're looking at the actual pixel level of this document. And on the right side of my screen, you can see what's called a histogram. Specifically, what we're able to detect here is that there's evidence of copying and pasting. A simple way to think about this is that seeing matching noise patterns would be a little bit like seeing two identical snowflakes sitting right next to each other in nature. You certainly would never expect to see that. But in the digital world, that's a clear sign of copying and pasting. We are also able to detect that this document has been both opened and edited within Photoshop, which is, of course, a known tool for generating fraudulent documentation. The second type of document here is the fillable PDF document that I made edits to. 
And on this document, in addition to being able to tell that it's been edited within Photoshop, we can actually tell that there's a text layer that's been inserted as well. The way to think about a digital document is that it's a little bit like a topographical map. If you imagine looking at it from a top-down view, it would appear to be flat. But if you turn it on its side, you could see different layers of elevation stacked up on top of each other. What our system does is we actually peel back these individual layers and then we parse them through our system. And in the event that we find a layer that has text in it, we then read that back. This is helpful in that we can tell not only that a document has been edited, but also what the specific edits in the document are. The last type of document that we have here is a templated document. This one was generated from onlinepaystub.com. And this is where our business starts to look a little bit like antivirus. Now, the reason why I say that is we're actually borrowing two of the primary detection techniques that you would see in an antivirus tool like Semantics Norton Antivirus. The first thing that we're doing is we're, of course, matching up any document URLs that we're able to detect against our list of fraudulent or template sources. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have a few hundred sources available, and so we check, and if we're able to match up with one of those sources, we can immediately mark a document as edited. The other thing, though, that we're able to do here is we're actually scanning this at the file level itself. And the reason why that's very important is that we've found that these template generating sources actually leave behind a distinct digital fingerprint on the document. What our system is doing is it's scanning each document that comes through to see if we can find a matching fingerprint. And in the event that we can, we can also mark the document as edited even if we've never actually seen that source before. And so in this way, we're both catching edited documents and growing our list of fraudulent sources over time.